All right, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on where you are. Um, and I hope you all had good discussions in your breakout groups. So now we're going to bring up the uh, table reporters to do a little report back on your collaborations and your ideas for new coll collaborations. So I'm going to ask um, Favor Norris, Joe Bozeman III, and Jackie McDermott to join. And whoever is the reporter from table seven, please raise your hand and we will be able to pull you up on stage. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, go great. ahead. You were first, so go oh, ahead. Right, lovely. Good morning. I am Faven Aris. I am a first year PhD student in electrical engineering at Stanford University. I am also the national chairperson of the National Society of Black Engineers. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Uh, thank you for having me. I got the pleasure of being with Table Three, and we had some wonderful people, including um, Sandra, uh, Mr. Curtis, I hope I'm saying that right, I'm remembering that correctly, Mr. Faust, um, Ani was there too, but unable to speak. Um, and so, yeah, we got to talk about system systematic development in regards to academic institutions, focused on three primary things. One of them was on formalizing mentorship for different types of bodies within an institution. So that includes the student body, the faculty body, staff body, um, and just general sort of mentorship training in general. Um, and that's to basically build up the existing body within any institution to create a better succession or leadership succession planning sort of uh, framework. Um, and so we realized some needs for collaborators included uh, both internal people, so both existing faculty and students who are experienced, and then also some external partners who could help with providing, say, fellowships, for example, or pre-existing frameworks that have been succeeding at those institutions. Uh, we also talked about the need for internship programs and actually formalizing uh, professional development opportunities like internships and co-ops for institutions. For example, ASU uh, requires every student to have at least one men uh, one internship by the time they graduate. And Illinois State University, who is working now to launch their engineering department, um, actually will be requiring that as well in their e-develop program. And so we talked about the needs for that, um, what partners are needed in terms of our corporate partners, um, uh, community partners, internship coordinators, a career center, um, and just more awareness and exposure to the student body um, on the need for something like industry experience. Uh, despite what their interests might be long term. Um, and then lastly, we talked about engaging with existing URM societies. So for example, we discussed wonderful programs like GEM, uh, which provides fellowships and professional opportunities for uh, minority students targetedly, um, and then many other fellowship programs that exist um, outside of the universities and how we could better work together as institu institutions to make sure that that awareness um, and information gets shared with the diverse student bodies and minoritized students in engineering and so and so forth. Um, and the needs for collaboration, it's just uh, making official partnerships or affiliates uh, partnerships with those existing fellowships and organizations, increasing marketing and awareness. Um, and then just also ensuring that, um, I guess, whatever shared values missions exist, that that is, that is in alignment um, with both the organization to partner with and organization that wants to partner. And that's it for our table. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and Joe, we'll move to you. Thank you for this platform. I am an assistant professor at the Georgia Institute of Technology in Civil and Environmental Engineering with the courtesy appointment of public policy. And our table was new. This is my first workshop day. So we had, you know, a lot of introductions and included Samil, Wash, Nora, and Alma. But we basically circled around two big points. The first, merging equity applications in sustainable urban systems and the kind of transdisciplinary partnerships it will require to do that effectively. And in the framework of that conversation, we began looking at the small grant opportunity of the roughly $2,000 uh, afforded here and just thinking about ways that we might be able to continue our planning and conversation, maybe utilizing those resources in some effective way. And then secondly, we had a chance to focus on a story collection framework that Samil was talking to us about where underrepresented minorities might be able to not only tell their stories of working within the field, but also maybe engage with up and coming researchers and practitioners on what it's really like day to day 
behind the scenes and how to manage that emotionally and professionally. So I think we were able to facilitate some opportunities for collaboration, story exchange. Of course, we had a lot of uh, email exchanges and, and website exchanges too. But that was the stopping point for us. And thank you again for the platform. Great. Thank you so much. Um, we'll go Jackie and then Ebony. Excellent. Uh, so our, our did more of um, a step back and analysis of what, what we've been doing kind of in our own positions. Um, and so um, we pretty much had representatives from different pre-collegiate programs, um, doing outreach kind of K through 12, all the way through undergrad to grad pipelines, and then even um, into that that faculty space. So uh, I think one of the the major topics that we we really discussed was some of the resources there for um, pipelines into faculty or tenure track positions. So um, we talked a little bit about um, the Chancellor's postdoc at the in the California system, the AGEP Promise um, Academy Alliance that funds postdocs and that can pipeline into some tenure track positions as well. Um, we also talked a little bit about future faculty workshop programs that help prepare graduate students for um, their next step in, in faculty positions, such as NextProf. Um, and I know at Purdue, I'm, I'm currently at Purdue, so um, we have some programs there as well, um, kind of trailblazers and engineering programs that help prepare graduate students and postdocs as well. I think one of the, the big things that um, our group highlighted was um, kind of the gap uh, that there is very little program for current graduate student programming for current graduate students. Um, and so one of the, the drives and passions, I think, of our group is to develop um, different structures and partnerships kind of in that space for, um, for current graduate students. Um, but I do think that our, our group was interesting um, and I really appreciated the conversation. We had, um, we had kind of different mindsets coming into this um, versus building collaborations versus kind of networking to talk about what are you doing. So, to hear about the kind of mini grant so excited to kind of continue conversations there um, now that we've kind of identified some gaps so thank you guys for having having this great thank you so much and ebony uh, hi good afternoon everyone uh, yes uh, thanks for the opportunity to chat with you all similar to jackie uh, our group talked a lot about um, postdoctoral opportunities as well, and uh, the value of a postdoctoral experience in engineering in preparing folks um, for the faculty track and acknowledging that there are some excellent uh, fellowship programs happening around the country and how do we ensure that our universities are getting connected to those for um, identifying uh, possible candidates for faculty positions. I think that was a theme that kind of cut through the conversation in terms of, you know, this, uh, the importance of being able to exchange those names um, at all levels of both graduate education and at, at the postdoctoral level and at the faculty level. And so there was a, a, a big push for discussing a national database and that, you know, and I know that there's something called the National Name Exchange, which we talked about uh, briefly as well, but just the value of being able to share and connect folks with opportunities, especially when dollars are existing to support. Um, so I'm very excited for our own postdoctoral fellowship that we're launching at MIT to be able to connect to some of the university folks that we talked to um, today. And, and we also talked about the value, which we also heard earlier about uh, national societies like Nesby, Nobuche, Ship, Aces, Maya, Sockness as opportunities to help folks visually see the answer to their age-old question of there's not enough fill in the blank um that there are like these very broad and big communities and and so it's it's really important for our universities and organizations to find ways to partner with some of the national societies so that we um can uh, engage in that that talent that is out there and i think that about covers it great talking to sonia joanne laverne and dave Regé. dave reggie Great, thank you so much, Ebony. Uh, thank you all for reporting. Um, we have a minute or two if anybody has any questions. Um, you can pop them in the Q&A, um, but then we will bring up Eric Ducharme who will do some wrap up. Just as a reminder, the platform will stay open if you'd like to continue your discussions either in the lobby or the collaboration room.